Hi, so this is the first of a series of lectures that I'm going to post on analyzing task fMRI with the FSL software package. So this is an overview just so you can get uh, some materials together and be ready to work through the rest of the lectures. And before I go through the, just, I'm just going to go through a very general pipeline, um, something you're going to want to do is check with the lab that you work in to see what uh, the standard pre-processing preferences are. I'll be mostly focusing on the pipeline that I tend to use, which might leave something out that your lab always does. So for example, I do not um, use slice timing correction. Uh, for If I'm smoothing my fMRI data for reasons I'll go into, um, so there's just, uh, personally, I don't think there's a big benefit to slice timing correction. Um, but if your lab uses it, you should use it. Uh, so check to see what your lab preferences are. And since um, some of these things I might be showing you might work really well for the data that I've worked with, and I've been at a few institutions, and um, uh, some things have worked well on some data that don't work well on other data. So for example, brain extraction, I've had a lot of luck with it for many years just using the standard brain extraction tool, BET, in FSL. And then recently I came across some structural data where BET didn't work well. So uh, for these sorts of things, it's hard for me to guess every possible um, snag that you could run into. So if I present something, and you try it on your data and it doesn't work and you need something different, let me know. And at the end of the video series, which I think will be, I don't know, six videos, maybe six to eight videos, I'll collect everybody's kind of troubleshooting uh, scenarios and put those together in a final video. So the basic idea behind this is that if you keep up with the videos and do a little bit of the data analysis each week, at the end, you'll have a fully analyzed data set. So I did something like this locally uh, with the Davidson lab that I work in here. And there were a few people who actually did this. And it was a shorter course, but of course a little bit different because we met for longer periods of time. But it was actually possible to um, keep up with it. So that's, the kind of, that's kind of the idea behind it. If you're doing this, obviously, after these have been posted for a while, you could just Think of it as uh, spending a week per video, especially if you're um, combining this with other tasks that you have to do. So my biggest tip in analyzing fMRI data, or basically any data, is to look at your data. And specifically, look at your data as soon as possible. Nothing makes a bigger knot in my stomach than somebody saying, oh, you know, we have this data set with 100 subjects in it that we haven't had time to analyze. My stomach instantly knots up because it's like, how, how did you get to the 100th subject without looking at any of the data? So you want to have your pipeline set up and have it automated so that as you collect data, you can crank a subject through um, part of the analysis pipeline and visually inspect the data. You also want to check your, especially behavioral data. I've seen studies or heard of studies where um, they didn't discover till 20 subjects in that the button box wasn't working. Um, and that's, that's horrendous. You have 20 subjects of completely useless data. So, and I just I want to emphasize, really, really look at all of the data um, and at every step along the way of your analysis. I realize it takes time, but um, you'll end up probably ultimately saving more time and you get to know the data better and I don't know there's always that subject you know that subject where you're like I don't know about this guy and you kind of flag those people and keep your eye on them throughout the analysis so here's the basic workflow um, so there'll probably be a video or two videos for each of these with the exception of this first one I'm not going to cover converting the DICOM to nifty um, Perhaps somebody can supply a command for this. I've t in a, historically, I haven't done this a lot, um, but when I have done it, I use the um, the tool. What is it called? Is it MRI convert in? Um, man, am I blanking? Anyway, they're different converters. Um, part of the reason I'm skipping this is I've never had a command that just works on any DICOM, and I'm afraid that if I did come up with something, it would work for about ten percent of you. 
and not the rest of you. So um, just ask around your lab about your DICOM to NIFTY conversion, and I'll assume you will have already done that. But I will go over quality assessment of the NIFTY files, just the raw NIFTY is what you should do. Um, the next step is to skull strip the structural images. Um, so I'll spend a lecture on that and then the quality assessment. Then the next step is to run your basic pre-process on functionals. So you know, different people do this differently. I like to trim the junk volumes from the beginning of my functional data ahead of time. So this is, this is something that will differ from lab to lab. Um, some folks that I've worked with, they automatically dump the, these sort of warm-up scans. They're, they're not even collected. Whereas other people, they're there and you have to you know, physically trim off the first uh, five volumes or so. Um, so I like to do that at the very beginning and then I don't have to worry about the extra files or worry about timing issues or anything. And checking the orientation of your images to make sure your header is correct and assessing motion especially important if you have a really young or a really old population. And of course, quality assessment. Then we'll run the level one analyses. This is just the um, within run analysis FSL. You'll analyze each run separately within subject. And then there's QA step. And then you run the level two, which is still within subject. I'm assuming we have multiple runs per subject. So the second level analysis is combining runs within subject. We will not concatenate runs. That is not um, uh, kind of concatenating, con concatenating runs in FSL kind of uh, uh, ruins some of the beauty of FSL. I'll talk more about that later. So it has some nice aspects about it that will be ruined if you do that. And there's a quality assessment, of course. And finally, the group level analysis and the QA uh, for that too. So yeah, we'll see how it pans out. Um, but I imagine there'd be at least a single lecture for each of these. Uh, one of the things I would like to focus on is scripting. So I will be supplying some scripts, most likely written in Python, not using NiPipe, although somebody has possibly volunteered to supply some NiPipe um, uh, pipelines to go along with what I'm covering, but we'll see. I'm not going to hold them to it because everybody's busy. But definitely you can script it. Uh, nothing makes me more sad than to see somebody click, click, clickety clicking through a GUI for an entire uh, data analysis. It's a huge waste of time and you're opening yourself to errors that are completely um, not trackable. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of scripting things. And if you think that you just aren't somebody who can write scripts, I assure you, you can. I taught this fMRI analysis course at UT for quite a few years, and I definitely saw some people who looked a little shocked on the first day when I was like, oh, this is the, the you know, we're using Max, but I'm like, okay, open your, open your X11 terminal. Um, but you can do it. Anybody can write scripts. So if you think you're horrible at writing scripts, just dump that thought out of your head and um, really throw yourself into it. I assure you you can do it and you'll be really, um, it will be really worth the time you spend learning how to write scripts. So get yourself ready between now and the next video. Um, first, you're gonna wanna find some data. So you could use data laying around if you've collected some data. Um, if this is your first time ever analyzing data and you want to have, I, I can't say this will guarantee the data analysis will go well, but if you use a data set from openfmri.org, um, I can, I'm pretty sure most of the PolDRAC data will go through the FSL pipeline pretty swiftly. Um, because I used to work with that lab and have analyzed those data and I know things like the brain extraction and all that run really well. So um, often if you're learning something new, the fewer errors you run into the first time, uh, the better. And then you, it makes you at least get the basics down and then you're ready to tackle more weirdness uh, when you go through it with the more complicated data. Plus you know what the results should look like if it's an openfmri.org. Uh, make sure you have FSL installed. Uh, it's basically uh, Mac or Linux, Unix. So um, get that installed. 
And if you're not familiar with Linux or Unix, I can recommend maybe going through this tutorial a little bit. I'll put the link in the comment box as well. Don't go crazy um, trying to find the perfect Unix book or anything like that. Uh, I would just go through this and do, they have little exercises you can do and just do some of them to orient yourself with the command line. Uh, basically, it's best to learn while doing. Uh, I've never been able to learn a computer program from a book. I just learned by actually having to do a task. So that's it. Um, those are your tasks before the next video. So thanks for watching. Uh, please join the Facebook group or follow on Tumblr or follow on Twitter or all three. Um, yeah, and if you have anything you want to add to this along the way, definitely post it on the, any of these places so I can incorporate it into this, this final thing. So that's, that'll be great. So thanks a lot and have a good day.